Hello, my name is Eric Rogers, and today I want to present to you Scroller.js. Scroller is a JavaScript parallax scrolling and animations library. So what makes Scroller a good choice? First, Scroller is lightweight and has no dependencies. It is 12 kilobytes minified. Scroller was made for mobile and desktop. Scroller was made with designers in mind. Only HTML and CSS are required to use it. Scroller offers many scrolling animations beyond simple parallax scrolling. Scroller will animate any CSS property that will take a number. So why parallax scrolling? The parallax scrolling can breathe life into web pages to give them a whole new level of interactivity. This also helps you to keep visitors interested in your site for longer periods of time. So how do I get started using Scroller? Creating your own pages with Scroller couldn't be easier. Simply download a zip file of Scroller's repository on GitHub, or alternatively, you could clone it to make sure that you always have the most recent version. So, okay, you now have a copy of the repository. Now what? Now you would open the distribution folder that is located in the repository and copy the scroller.min.js file. Place this file in your project, add a link to scroller at the bottom of your HTML, and you're all set. Okay, so now what do I do? And I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look at an example that I've created. In this simple example, I just show off a couple of different animation features of Scroller using the simple method of telling Scroller what the scroll position is of the scroll bar or the page. And as I start to scroll downwards, you notice that the lettering starts to change colors, some different things start happening, backgrounds start to speed up and shift around, some of them don't move at all text will grow giant and even have a blur effect with a little bit of trickery. So let's go over to the code for this example. The HTML is set up as such. Everything in the header portion of the HTML is pretty much standard. The way that I use Scroller for this is I just made a div ID with a container and that it was more or less just so I could contain the page. It is actually necessary. I use Scroller in sections. For every section there is a different background. So I have the first section, the content here is in between the first and second section and then the second section and so on. The CSS for this site is here. At the top I just have a CSS reset that you can find by looking on Google for Eric Meyer CSS reset. And then I used a background class on all of the section elements and I loaded each background in as background 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 through the CSS. So you can see there is no actual good JavaScript being wrote to do any of this. It doesn't really take very much CSS to do this example. I did however include a little bit of jQuery and this is more or less for me to set the height and width of the screen of the viewport. It just made it a little bit easier, but it is not necessary. So let's break it down. First we're going to look at the jQuery. And something I should point out is that Scroller does not require jQuery to work. Everything can be written in plain JavaScript as well. The first thing I do with the jQuery is initialize the Scroller plugin. Inside of the init call, I also set the force height and smooth scrolling options to false. And for the next section of the jQuery, I just set each section element to have the same height as the viewport. 
Now we're going to go on to the HTML setup. And this is where most everything is going to happen. For the first section, every slide or background is going to be contained in a section. Important things to notice is that the section has a class of slides right here. This div has a class of bkg and bkg1. This is how we're going to load the background for each slide. bkg is just a general class that I added so that I could style every background and then the bkg1 is the first slide so I am actually setting the background image through this. The h1 tag now we start to see some magic from scroller. You'll notice that inside of the opening h1 tag we have some data values. This is how we tell scroller when it should animate our elements. What this line of code says to scroller is that when the window dot scroll y position is at zero, the scroll position is at the very top, set CSS color property to white using the RGBA format. Next to line, I set the second data property that is set in the opening h1 tag tells scroller that when the user has scrolled 272 pixels down, change the color to red. But the nice thing about scroller is that it doesn't just switch colors, it smoothly transitions the color from white to red as the user scrolls. So we can see here data-272 equals the color red. So the black stripe and text. As you've probably guessed, the scroller is animating the opacity of the black stripe and the text contained within it. Something to take note of here is that there is a data property set to the opacity of zero. Then there are two in a row set to opacity to one, and then another to set the opacity back to zero for both elements. So here the data dash zero, which would be the very top, is sets the opacity to zero, which means it would be invisible. And then once it reaches 300, the opacity is at 1. So it would animate from 0 to 1 between 0 and 300. Then at 600, I set it at 1 again. And you might wonder why I did that, because it's already at 1. And the reason for that is that because we want the element to wait until it reaches the second point before it starts to animate back to zero. So for the black stripe, when this user scrolls 300 pixels down, the stripe is fully visible. The stripe remains fully visible until the user scrolls 600 pixels down, and then it begins to animate until the user reaches 800 pixels down, where it is then completely invisible again. For the second section, for this section our first data property is set to 800 pixels down and then animates until the user scrolls 1480 pixels down. Now because the position isn't changed until 800 pixels down, the background property that was set in the CSS file will be in effect until that point is reached. So the background will scroll as normal up to 800 pixels. Then, at 800 pixels down, the background begins to animate upwards until the user scrolls down 1480 pixels, at which point it will have moved 500 pixels up. And the CSS for the second section. Note, something to note here is that the Z index is set to 999. That makes the H1 element disappear below the background as, as it is scrolled past it. So if you notice this hello will actually sink in underneath this background. Now for the third section. In this section we have a static image with a tad bit of text. The text begins to fade in when the user scrolls down 1280 pixels and becomes fully visible at 1300 pixels. The CSS for this background image the background attachment fixed is what keeps the image in place as the user scrolls. So for not this section, this is the second one. For this third section, you see it doesn't move. 
and for the fourth section, I shift the background position 500 pixels upward by giving it a negative value as the user scrolls from 2000 pixels down to 2754 pixels down. The text grow is animated in two ways. First at 2000 pixels I set the Y position of the text to 800 pixels down and the font size to 12 points. Then the text is animated through 3200 pixels down. The text is moved upwards 600 pixels and the font size is changed to 600 points. And then in the last section, the only animation that actually happens is the, for the second header with a tiny bit of trickery. And what I mean by that is actually, as I scroll up, the image is blurred out, but the only thing that actually is animated is this text here that says with a tiny bit of trickery. But in actuality, the real magic is in the CSS. The background for the last section is also set to fixed, which means that it will simply overlay the section 5 background as the user continues to scroll. The trickery came from Photoshop because the last section image is just a copy of the section 5 image but with a bit of Gaussian blur. So actually this is just two different images that are the exact same image, a copy of one, and the second one that I'm scrolling up is has a little bit of blur and a little bit of vibrance to make it stand out more so that you can see, especially when I scroll past this B, that everything blurs over nicely. So this concludes my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and I thank you for your time.